my name is Jessica DiLorenzo and I'm so excited to be partnering with Embracing Our Differences to engage you in a movement journey inspired by the story Ish by Peter Reynolds. What is creative movement? If we have the ability to move even a portion of our body, we have the power to become creative movers. Creative movers communicate and tell stories using their bodies instead of their voices. A creative movement can simply be an expanded gesture or posture. We use gesture all of the time to communicate. We wave to say hello. We tell someone to come closer with a gesture. We can also tell them to stop. Our gesture and our posture can also communicate how we are feeling. Can you guess what I'm feeling based on my facial expression and gesture? How about now? When we expand those postures and gestures or make them bigger, engaging more parts of our body, we are exploring creative movement. I can take a gesture that shows joy and expand it by jumping up and flicking my hands open five times. Try it with me. One, two, three, four, five. I can express sadness by wrapping my arms around my torso and slowly rotating around my center while moving down to a low level. Notice how we explore different levels in order to express the feeling. When I use creative movement to express emotions that don't feel so good, I tend to move at a lower level. When I express feelings that bring me joy, I tend to move to higher levels. You might express feelings in different ways. Take a moment and create your own movements to show joy and sorrow. Let's talk about safety for a moment. Throughout this movement journey, we are going to be exploring the elements of dance, which are body, energy, actions, space, and time. We'll be using as much of our body as we can, even fingers and toes to express ideas and feelings. So we'll want to make sure we have enough space to do that. Take a moment and make sure you're not standing too close to furniture, a friend, a pet, or a family member. We'll be exploring different types of energy, sometimes calm and steady energy, and sometimes bold, high intensity energy. As we explore energy, it will be important to remember if you ever start feeling out of control, you can come right back to that neutral position and just breathe. Actions. Some actions we'll explore are twisting, turning, jumping, gliding. Again, make sure you have enough space to do this safely and know you can always come back to neutral if you're feeling out of control. Let's look at space. We've already mentioned it a few times. In addition to having enough personal space to move, try to use those different levels, high, medium, low level to express feelings and ideas. You can create so many shapes on multiple levels. Really get your spine and legs into your movements. Finally, let's take a quick look at time. We'll explore this more later, but do your best to stay with me and try not to rush ahead or fall behind. Even though you're learning virtually, when we move and breathe together, it can make us feel more connected as a community. Now, let's find a steady beat. Creative movers often move to a steady beat and count how many beats each movement takes up so they can move in sync with others. Sometimes we face big problems and challenges like when a family member must move far away. And sometimes we face smaller problems like missing the bus or breaking a pencil. All the problems we face, big and small, can cause our feelings to change throughout the day. Things can cause us to feel happy and excited too. Before I even started work this morning, I had three or four different feelings. I started my day feeling grumpy and I really didn't want to get out of bed. Here's what a gesture and posture might look like for grumpy. 
So let's expand that into a creative movement for a count of four. One, two, three, four. Next, I went for a little jog, which made me feel energized. Here's what a gesture might look like for energize. But I want to bring that into my whole body and even include a motion that looks like jogging that would be creative. Let's try it to a four count. One, two, three, four. Finally, I felt inspired to teach this lesson today. Usually when I feel inspired, a gesture I do is touch my heart. So let's expand on that with this sweeping motion. Bring it around and turn for four, three, two, one. Can we put all of these together? Let's start from the top. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Again, grumpy. Two, three, four. Here's energized. Two, three, four. And inspired. Two, three, four. Can you think of three different feelings you have experienced? Pause the video and take a few minutes to come up with a sequence of creative movements to show how you can flow from one feeling to the next. Consider sharing your movement sequence with a friend or family member in your house. Give each feeling four counts. Try to use two different levels and as many parts of your body as you can to express the feelings. Make sure you stay safe and in control of your body. I hope you had a great time creating your own movement sequence. Now that we've had some time to explore familiar feelings through movement, let's see if we can create a movement sequence to show how a character's feelings change as they experience different events in a story. The story we'll look at today is Ish by Peter Reynolds, but you can do this with any story. You can even make up your own. As you listen, pay attention to the feelings Ramon experiences. Use the thinking map to keep track of the feelings he experiences. You can also write down the different events that took place to make his feelings change. When you're done listening and taking notes, we'll review what we discovered together. Ish by Peter H. Reynolds. Ish. Ramon loved to draw. Anytime, anything, anywhere. One day, Ramon was drawing a vase of flowers. His brother, Leon, leaned over his shoulder. Leon burst out laughing. What is that? he asked. Ramon could not even answer. He just crumpled up the drawing and threw it across the room. Leon's laughter haunted Ramon. He kept trying to make his drawings look right, but they never did. After many months and many crumpled sheets of paper, Ramon put his pencil down. I'm done. Marisol, his sister, was watching him. What do you want? He snapped. I was watching you draw, she said. Ramon sneered. I'm not drawing. Go away. Marisol ran away, but not before picking up a crumpled sheet of paper. Hey, come back here with that. Ramon raced after Marisol, up the hall, and into her room. He was about to yell, but fell silent when he saw his sister's walls. He stared at the crumpled gallery. This is one of my favorites, Marisol said, pointing. That was supposed to be a vase of flowers. Ramon said, but it doesn't look like one. Well, it looks vase-ish, she exclaimed. Vase-ish? Ramon looked closer. Then he studied all the drawings on Marisol's walls and began to see them in a whole new way. 
They do look ish, he said. Ramon felt light and energized, thinking Ishley allowed his ideas to flow freely. He began to draw what he felt, loose lines quickly springing out without worry. Ramon once again drew and drew the world around him. Making an ish drawing felt wonderful. He filled his journals, tree-ish, house-ish, boat-ish, afternoon-ish, fish-ish, sun-ish. Ramon realized he could draw his ish feelings too. Peace-ish, silly-ish, excited-ish. His ish art inspired ish writing. He wasn't sure if he was writing poems, but he knew they were poem-ish. Ponder, pond, ponder, dream, wander, pond, pond, yawned, yawned, gleam, wander, Ramon. One spring morning, Ramon had a wonderful feeling. It was a feeling that even ish words and ish drawings could not capture. He decided not to capture it. Instead, he simply savored it. And Ramon lived ishfully ever after. The end ish. First, Ramon was drawing and that made him feel so much love. Then Ramon's brother, Leon, laughed at his drawings and that made him feel really angry. After many months of trying to draw more realistic looking images, he gave up on drawing and that just made him feel miserable and sad. Then he saw his sister's wall full of his drawings that he had crumpled up. That made him feel amazed and appreciated. Finally, he saw his pictures in a whole new way, ish, and that made him feel light and energized. Let's see if we can come up with simple gestures for the different events that took place in the story and the feelings Ramon experienced. First, let's just pantomime drawing. Pantomiming is simply acting like you're drawing with no props or words. Can you bring a look of love to your facial expression and your posture? Now let's expand that gesture and posture. Imagine you have a huge canvas. You get to paint with your whole body. Bring that feeling of love into your movement. Down, up, down, up. A little spin around like you have a canvas all around your body. And let's look at the next event and feeling. Ramon's brother laughed at his drawings. Ramon felt angry. We know because he crumpled up his drawing and threw it. Can you pantomime doing that? Just act it out. Let's really see the anger on your face. Now, let's expand that by imagining our body is the paper being crumpled up and then explode with an angry stomp. Next, Ramon tried and tried again and again to draw more realistic images, but he felt miserable because he didn't think they were good enough. Let's go back to drawing like we have a large canvas, but this time, instead of fluid lines, let's draw rigid, jagged lines with a look of misery and sadness on our face. Now expand that to include your whole body. Up, down, up, down, slash the idea away. Up, down, up, down, slash the idea away. Then Ramon saw his sister's wall and felt amazed and appreciated. Point like you're in amazement. Let's see the look of amazement on your face. Now can we expand that pointing into both arms circling around and then drawing your arms back into your heart? Finally, he had a whole new way of seeing his pictures thanks to his sister. So he kept drawing again, feeling light and energized. Pantomime drawing again with a feeling of lightness and energy in your wrist and on your face. Now come back to that movement we did at the beginning, but this time when we spin, we'll put a little jump in. Awesome. I think we have a plan for the whole movement sequence. Creative movers sometimes talk about setting a piece. That's what we just did. 
we came up with some movements and decided in which order to place them. We did it! Now you know how to create movement sequences to retell any of your favorite stories. You can use the elements of body, energy, action, space, and time to show feelings and key events that took place in stories. Have a great time creating, and I'll see you next time. For more information on embracing our differences in bite-sized lesson plans and virtual experiences, visit embracingourdifferences.org.